In light of YouTube's new TOS updates and all the new ways for me to get demonetized, I thought now was a better time than ever for us to cover some simpler stuff, like a whole new beginner's guide to RimWorld with no mods or DLC, just straight up walkthrough of your first day on the Rim. I'd like to ask everyone watching take a moment to check out our Patreon and the new Adblock Plus tier for $1. The better we can fund ourselves without the platform, the better we can serve you content. Now let's get to the tutorial. Feel free to launch your game and follow along. I see you booted up the game. Welcome. On the top, you can see a tutorial button. The game has a decent tutorial, but seeing as you're here, it probably wasn't quite enough. So don't worry about that. We have you taken care of here. Instead, we're going to dive right in and hit new colony. As you can see, the game has four stars to choose from. Crash landed is the go-to for most of us room wilders. You get an assortment of resources and three pawns of your choosing. This is the recommended choice for you. Lost tribe is the second option. Not nearly as easy. You have less tech and you gain new tech much slower. You start with some very basic resources and five mouths to feed. This start will be difficult for new players best of luck. Third is the Rich Explorer. This star gives you a super cool charge rifle and a bunch of money and resources. The game has labeled it as especially hard due to starting with one pawn, but I think the wise player will find this to be more of a boon than a punishment. Have fun. Fourth of the options is Naked Brutality. Especially hard, you'll start the game with nothing, not even the clothes on your back. This will be a challenge for just about any player, at least early on. Now for today's video, we are going to choose Crash Landed, but we will be making separate tutorials for the other scenarios, so don't you worry. Even more options. The game has three storytellers. Each are very special. Cassandra Classic is a very, very dangerous storyteller. Many players can attest to this. She lulls you into a false sense of security, waiting great times between raids, and then sending huge waves that could wipe your save. If you choose her to be sure to stay focused. Second of the storytellers is Phoebe Chillax. It's pretty chill, giving lots of times between raids, and the ones she does send are not always all that bad. Even in the end game, well, most of the time. Third is my favorite. Randy Random is awesome. He keeps things interesting and doesn't pull any punches. There's a reason he stands the all-time favorite of the Rimworld community, and that's why for this we are going to be choosing Randy. The game has six difficulty options, but it's not so easy to explain the difference between them other than that they are all based on the Strive to Survive difficulty option, and some of the values are different between each one. For today's video, we're going to pick Adventure Story and Reload Anytime Mode. In the create a world screen, you'll be able to modify various aspects of the world, like the world seed, which I have changed to beginner's guide. Make sure you have the same seed as me so you can follow along on the exact same tile. Here, you can also adjust how much of the planet is covered, as well as its rainfall, temperature, and population. On the right, you can disable any factions you don't want to have in your game world. We are going to leave all this alone and hit continue. Welcome to the world map. If you've been following along, your screen should look exactly like mine right now. If you click around, the different colored tiles these are all different biomes. You will see the tile stats pop up on the left of the screen. Right in the middle of the screen is a temperate forest. On the left, you will see that the terrain is labeled as mountainous. This means that there are going to be a lot of mountains on this tile. The movement difficulty is how hard it will be for caravans to cross the tile. And then you have the stone types, which right now is granite and marble. Granite and marble are the very best stone types to have on a tile. So this is great. Below that, you can see the average temperature. This is the range of temperature this tile will experience throughout the game year, so be sure to pick one that doesn't get crazy cold like an ice sheet tile. And just below that is the growing period. This tells you what times of year you'll be able to grow crops. This is important to know if you want to have a big colony. At the very bottom, you'll see an average disease frequency, which tells you how often palms will get sick with things like the plague. To follow along, find this tile on your map and click it, then click next. Welcome to the character creation screen. This screen is where you choose your starting colonists. This screen displays the pawn skills, passions, traits, and backstories, as well as relationships and any health effects they might have. Try to make sure that among your first three colonists, someone has a passion for construction, plants, and medicine. Make sure that whoever has construction is at least level five. This will be critical later on. These are the three biggest tasks you will face early on. It also helps to make sure nobody has the trait incapable of dumb labor or incapable of violence, as these can increase the difference difficulty exponentially, avoid anyone with serious health issues as well. Once you feel satisfied with your choices, go ahead and hit next. You've made it. Welcome to your first crash land into the rim. If you're following along, go ahead and hit pause now. There are a few things we need to do. Let's take a look around the map tile. Whoa. Wow, we have a great map here, if we wanted to build a mountain base, of course. If you look around on the north end of the map, you will see we have a few geysers. These will be important for generators later on. Near the edges, we have a lot of fertile soil, but it's a little too 
too close to the map's edge. If a raid happens, you won't have much time to prepare if the farmers are out working. Let's unpause now that we've gotten the lay of the land. There are three pawns. Let's quick scroll through them and assign a weapon based on their abilities. Everyone should be prepared to defend themselves on the rim. Now that all that is done, let's get started on our barracks. This will be our home from now on. Here near the mountain will be best. We are going to build a wall that blocks us in and the pawns will automatically build a roof over it and cut down any trees in the way. You can build it by clicking the architect menu on the bottom left and then selecting structures. Digging into the mountain comes with advantages and disadvantages. It takes longer and there is the risk of infestations. However, you will not have to fear mortar fire or drop pod raids and they are highly defensible, perfect for your first base in Rimwell. Now that they are done, let's build a zone. Pawns will automatically haul stuff to stockpile zones if they are scheduled to do so and have no other more important tasks. For now, let's hold shift and click each work type to enable them for everyone. Later on, when you have more pawns, you may want to specify tasks. Next, let's build three beds, one for each pawn. Sleeping on the ground grants a negative buff that makes pawns upset. It's best to attend to pawns needs so that they don't suffer mental breaks. And finally, a table and two chairs so pawns can eat. This gives them a place to eat and socialize. I am also going to build a torch in here to give the pawns light so they can see. Pawns in the dark will be upset as well as work slower and have poor quality work so it's best to keep their places lit. One last thing to build is a chess table so that pawns have a way to refill their recreation. Recreation is important to keep pawns happy so make sure you don't forget about it. Let's move on to the next section. Go ahead and hover your mouse around the ground outside. On the bottom left of your screen you will see the game will tell you what kind of soil you are hovering over as well as the light level of the area. When planting crops you want the quality to be at least soil. Rocky soil doesn't grow as well and fertile soil is the best but for us we are going to go ahead and plant in normal soil right in front of the base. Go ahead and click zone tab in the architect menu and select growing zone. Now create a growing zone of at least 25 tiles and select the plant type as rice. This will be your first crop in the game. It has low yields but it grows fast which makes it great when you are starting out. Once your pawns have finished planting the rice let's create another slightly larger zone four tiles away from the first zone and so corn. Corn is a great crop that takes more time and less work to grow and yields more food overall. This will be your primary crop for food in the future. While your crops are growing, we will have some time, so it's best we work on getting some of your facilities up and running so you are prepared to make food from the plants you grow. Let's build a kitchen and a storage base for food. Building your fridge on the side of the base you keep your farms at will speed up hauling when harvest time comes. We are also going to build shelves that will allow us to fit more stuff inside the fridge. Let's make sure pawns only put food in here by selecting a finished shelf, clicking the storage tab, and clearing the permissions. Now let's check the box next to foods. Let's double click on a shelf to select them all and and click link. Look at that. All the pawns are now removing non-food items from the shelves. This will come in handy for many other things in the future when you are building facilities. Next, we will build a fueled stove in this smaller room so pawns can cook. It's important that there is only one door into the cooking room so that you can avoid having pawns walking in and out making the place dirty. A dirty kitchen will raise the chances of pawns getting food poisoning from their meals so let's avoid that. Next, let's select the stove and create an order to produce meals. Select bills, add bill, and then click simple meals. Now click the tab that says do it x times and change it to do until you have x. Let's change the value to 12. From now on, pawns will make sure there are always at least 12 cooked meals in the fridge. Congrats, you now have a proper kitchen. In the future, when you have electricity, make sure to add a cooler to your fridge walls to keep your food cold. We will actually do this in the next section. Power is vital to a thriving colony on the rim. Let's get your hands on some. Open the architect tab and select power. Now let's build a windmill. I'm going to place mine in front of the base between the crop fields. This will make walling in the base easier in the future. After that, let's build a power cable from the windmill into our base and run it through the walls. This will deliver power to nearby objects when we place them. After that, let's build a cooler in our fridge and replace all these pesky torches with standing lamps. Torches are okay, but they need to be refilled every couple of days. Swapping them out is one less task for our pawns to do. Once the cooler is built, select it and reduce the temperature to negative nine. This will ensure any food kept in the fridge is frozen. Frozen food does not spoil. This will let you keep your food long after it has been harvested. It's time to build a research room. You will need it in order to unlock new technologies and advance your base here on the rim. Let's build this into the mountains so we can learn a few things at once. When building a research room, it's important to keep the floors clean so that people can research faster. Once the research room is built, let's select the research tab and select batteries as our first research. You will notice that the windmill doesn't produce power at all times. A battery will help you supply power to your base when none is being produced. Crafting is going to become a big task in your base, but let's go over the basics and make a club. Clubs are good for taking prisoners alive as they have a lower chance to kill. Select production. Now let's place a crafting spot near our stockpile. Next, select bills 
add bill and select club. A pawn will now come and craft a club. Over time, pawns will get better at performing various tasks and eventually make excellent and masterwork quality items. An item's quality has a big impact on how much damage it does, so be sure to pick someone to do all your crafting from the start. There is still quite a lot to learn, but this covers the basics. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and consider following me on Patreon. It really helps a lot. I've gone ahead and linked a playlist to a set of videos to help you guys learn all the other aspects of the game. Feel free to watch them at your leisure. Thank you for watching. Newbert out.